Welcome to the New Normal. This is one of over 100,000 images taken of the Holy Fire in Orange County, California, from an alert wildfire camera during the pitched battle to save Santiago Peak and the communities around Lake Elsinore. These cameras are now in five different states, and they provide firefighters and first responders that crystal clear 360-degree view of the wildfire battle space. And that's important because it gives them an additional set of eyes that makes their job a lot safer. Now, here's the thing. We've also taken these cameras and we've built a website that's hosted by uh, Amazon Web Services in the cloud. And we invite you, the public, to get on there during wildfire events to understand your own situational awareness. More than that, we'd like to engage you over time to become a fire spotter so that we can get on top of these fires much earlier. In a sense, what we've done is created a 21st century fire lookout tower, but now it's crowdsourced, and that means you. We need your help. Let's get to work. You know, if you've been in California especially, or really just out west, we've learned a new lexicon for wildfire. But for me and for my family, we got a sneak preview. Because 15 years ago, we were burned over by the Cedar Fire in San Diego, California. Not a good situation. But in doing that, we really got a front row seat to what was going to happen in the future. In a sense, it was the canary in the coal mine. And now we're in act two. But again, if you hang around a coffee shop, you'll start hearing these expressions. I've never seen wildfire behavior like this before. Not good. It's the largest fire in California history. That just took eight months to break. We had two in eight months. And sandwiched in between, we had the largest fire in Nevada history. The most destructive fire in California history. We went from the tubs to the campfire in 13 months. The most deadly fire in California history. We don't ever want to hear that. And yet, between the North Bay complex and the campfire, again, in 13 months. Not a good situation. You'll also hear the fire just exploded. This uh, set of six images is from one of our alert wildfire cameras that we co-host with state parks at Orville Dam. It's about 20 miles away from Paradise, California. And you can see at 7.02, there's hardly a wisp of smoke. The fire is 30 minutes old. It's working its way out of the Feather River Canyon, but you can barely see it. And then five minutes later, it explodes. You can already see a well-developed plume head. And over the next 30 minutes, it's a monster. The other thing you'll hear, it's a war zone, right? I don't think about that, about war zones, but this is what it is. This is just as well could be in Coffee Park, Santa Rosa, California, or in the suburbs of Malibu, but this is Paradise, California. This is one of 18,000 structures lost over those couple days, 18,000. This is the new normal, and it's not acceptable. So Alert Wildfire is a group of three universities, Nevada, UC San Diego, and Oregon. And it started in 2013, a project called Alert Tahoe, with support from the Tahoe Prosperity Center and the U.S. Forest Service. And with some success, it grew rapidly eastward with funding from the Bureau of Land Management. And then in 2017, off we go into San Diego County. And we had some really good successes there you'll hear about in a minute. But by the end of 2018, we had 100 fire cameras out. That's not enough. And so thanks to uh, utilities, uh, not only San Diego Gas and Electric, but Southern California Edison and Pacific Gas and Electric, and counties like Napa, Sonoma, and Marin, that we've been able to kind of go in overdrive. And what we hope to do over this next year is to get two to 300 cameras out and do that again and again for the next several years. And this is important, because we need to have more cameras out there. And just a little bit of good news with our Geolinks partners, 
We managed in the last two months to put out 80 cameras, and in a few weeks from now, we'll be over 100. So why are we doing this? Well, a lot of reasons. One of them is to reduce the time to get on top of fires. And you know we're all geographically challenged. Well, imagine when you're in dispatch and some citizen calls you in and tells you, "Hey, the fire's on Pine Mountain, but it's 15 miles away on Geyser Peak." That mistake can be the difference between a large fire and a small fire, and that happened this past year. But it only took a few tens of seconds to confirm that. Well, they didn't do so hot in geography, but they got on top of the fire. Once you're viewing the fire through the alert wildfire cameras and our time lapse, you pretty much right away know if it's blowing up. Maybe it's setting down. Do I send more planes? A couple extra helicopters? Maybe I scale down and wait for the next fire. That's all knowable. The other thing to do while you're fighting the fire, and this again is also a firefighter safety issue, is understand the critical behavior. How is it behaving throughout that process? Again. The public, you can also time lapse our cameras and understand that yourself. And unfortunately, if fires escape, as they do, it also gives the public a chance to understand their own situational awareness, along with first responders who need to get you out of the way. So these cameras are critical in protecting lives in these blowups. And then the last thing you might not think about, unless you're a resident in the Oakland Hills. Is that once that fire is set down and it's 100% contained? Well, as we know from the tunnel fire, it was knocked down until it roared back and killed over 20 people and three billion dollars of damage. So we need to keep a watchful eye on containment. Now, there's two ways of looking at the alert wildfire cameras. The first one, you got to be a firefighter, first responder, or oddly enough, you have to work in a seismology lab. So that's your choice. And this is live view. It's just what it sounds like. It's live. <laughs> this is an example of the Perry Fire, just uh, northeast of Reno, and it's a very apocalyptic uh, slide with the helicopter. But they're basically doing asset protection to make sure that you can fly in and out of the airport because that's the FAA radar dome. So it's not just about lives and habitat. Sometimes it's about infrastructure. But you can see this crystal clear, second by second, and make the best decisions possible. Ah, but the public. Now you get your chance. So this is our web portal, and when you look at it, you, it's pretty easy to use. There's a whole bunch of little tiles at the bottom, and those are different cameras. And hopefully, you'll recognize the names from different mountaintops. And then there's the main picture, and in this case, it's Red Mountain looking at the Lilac Fire. So you push the, the camera you want, and then from there you can right-click that big, big old picture, or touch it on your Android or, or your iPhone. And for two seconds, so you can time lapse it, so you can understand the last 15 seconds, last minute. And if you look to the right, you can see the camera that you're looking at and the little comb, the view shed. So again, easy to understand your situational awareness. What we're again trying to do is do that 21st century lookout tower. All right, so I keep talking about time lapse. So this is an example of the Wall Fire, about 20 miles to the south of Paradise, California. But this is in、uh, 2016, and what you'll notice is that now we're looking at it live, and you can see that uh, spinning, uh, almost like a fire tornado. And if many of you read the 150 minutes of hell in the San Francisco Chronicle about the car fire, this is the same type of thing, except two years before, and that tore down into Western Reading, and there was a loss of life and a lot of infrastructure. And again, we want. Not only the firefighters and the first responders, but you should be able to see that live in real time. All right, so we'll just go through one success. It's kind of a big success here, but this is、uh, the Lilac Fire in San Diego County, and December seventh, two thousand seventeen, is a day that will live in infamy for San Diego County, because this was the day of the worst fire conditions ever recorded. This was several days after the Thomas Fire took off and started to tear through Ventura and Santa Barbara counties, and then there was the Skirball Fire by the Getty Museum. Things were not looking good. Worst day in San Diego County history. And unfortunately, at 
off Old Highway 395, right next to I-15, a little north of Escondido, California. An RV stalled on the side of the road, caught fire. Yet, the cameras were there. And uh, Captain Corey Costa from CAL FIRE, within 35 seconds, had pointed the camera and saw the wisps of smoke, as you see there. Now, they just didn't look at this camera. They looked at all the other cameras in the county, and they realized there wasn't another fire. So they massively threw all of their equipment and trucks into the San Luis River Gap to stop this fire. And so why is that important? You think of just a couple minutes, but this is 27 minutes after the start of the fire. It's blowing up. So sometimes you don't have the luxury of a couple minutes or five or 10 minutes. You got to get on top of it. And thankfully, because of a lot of bravery and some technology, they were able to get on top of the lilac fire. One more story is in the afternoon, a fire took off on the Mexican side of the California-Mexico border. And in years past, they would have had to pull some of the firefighters in case it was in California. But using the system, they realized, unfortunately, Mexico, it's your problem, and they were able to keep everybody in the battle. And this fire was knocked down at 4,050 acres. Many people thought it had the potential to burn to I-5, 50,000 acres, multi-billion dollar fire, potential loss of life. Now, I, I kind of lied, because I'll tell you one more story. This year, three days after the Woolsey fire, we had another really bad set of conditions in San Diego County. And there were two fire starts, and they were both hammered immediately. In fact, one was knocked down before the first fire truck got there from a sky crane helicopter. So this is working. So hopefully, I got you interested, and I'm going to get some fire spotters or forest guards out of here. Okay, so we want to get, definitely get you, get you into the game. Because it's important, because our heart goes out to the communities like Paradise, Coffee Park, Santa Rosa, Butte County, right? What we don't want to do is have your county or your city be strong. We need your help. We need you to volunteer, have neighborhood watches, jump on these cameras, and help us get a start to knock down those fires early. Thank you.